uh, Sorish, you can take on from you. Okay, sure. So today's topic was about Mojito. So let's start with that. As you have already completed mocking course, can anyone tell me what is the need of mocking frameworks? Uh, Mockito is a uh, basically is a Java library, uh, uh, and uh, that need for uh, like uh, uh, you test unit testing, right? For Java application. Okay, so basically, why we need to do mocking? For effective unit testing, we use mocking. What do you understand by effective unit test test? Sorry? What is our understanding related to the effective unit test cases? When you are talking about unit test, right? I... Unit test should be you know, focused on um, testing the particular logic for a component. Okay. It uh -huh. should be fast, right? It should be reliable and should not be giving a consistent result on the same kind of you know inputs right. on those scenarios. So do this uh, when you basically you know write programs in any programming language. Any particular component or object of class has a dependency on other objects, be it a mail client, be it a database, be it something else. And these dependencies are defined as an objects, right? It may be a repository to the database or DAO access layer. It may be a network connection that we can use to open resource, access resource over the network. Or it can be a HTTP client which is accessing out external APIs. Similarly, it can be a mail client, SMTP client, which is sending us emails. So those kind of dependencies, if we wanted to write unit test cases, so then our fo focus should be the object under test, right? So in that case, all the external dependencies we should be mock out. That means we create a particular test double, which is act as a real object in place of the real object we use that, and the behavior we can replace. So today we're going to be looking into uh, how we can you know create mock objects. What is the difference between mock and spy? How we generally write our test cases with a given when then or arrange act assert pattern. What are verify? What is answer? What is capture? Argument capture and what is exception? So basically, there is a two things we had when you use a mocking framework is a mock and a star. They're a little bit different. What is a mock? Is basically a class that generates on the fly and it changes the current class or dependent class that the current object have. Okay. And a mock generally doesn't do anything. Right. If you call a particular method or a mock class, it returns default value. For example, if it's returning an object, it returns null. If I'm returning Boolean value, it returns false. So all the default value of the card frame, it returns that. Then what about, then what do we actually does? Here we just check whether a certain method has been called on the dependent object or not. Okay. That is a mock. Then what is the difference between a stub? Stub is similar to a mock, but here what happened is you can change the behavior. In behavior means the methods or the function. 
functions of any class, any object is define the behavior, and the state is the individual fields that holds the instance fields that hold the state, right? So behaviors are defined by a function. So what you can do in case of a stub, we override the behaviors. That is, we override how the function is going to be behave, right? That means what the value it can return based on a certain, you know, parameters we seen or not. Okay. So that means we're going to choose what kind of return or response we're going to be sending out of here. And here we can, you know, verify the state. We can check whether what is the particular parameters that we, we use to call this particular function, how the state or the parameter that is being used, if the particular functions has been a particular state has been defined. So that we can verify with that. Okay. So the common difference between that is that between a mock and a stub is that where in case of a stub, we override the function behavior that we, we choose to return what response the function will return on a certain input values. Okay. What is taste double? Taste double is when you create a mock and stub, right? That is known as a taste double, which basically replaces the existing class or object rather. It has the same interface, that means it has the same number of methods, same signature of return type, and everything. And this is being generated on the fly, right? And then what you need, we change, we change the behavior. So when we change the behavior, we can you know you know modify how the function is working on. Okay. Now, how we can use, uh, previously we have seen that we have used the JMnet 5, right? We have seen that we have to use a different set of dependencies. So when you're going to be using the same dependencies, we're going to be first importing the JMnet Jupyter engine 5.8.1. And then are we going to also be importing Mokito code? That is 4.4.0. Along with that, we're going to add the support for JMnet 5, that is JMnet Jupyter, we're going to include the another dependency that is the Mokito JMnet Jupyter, the same version. And all of the scope is obviously test. That is for Marvel. We can also use the Mokito with JMnet 4, right? So if any of our project having like Mokito with the JMnet 4 version, or if you wanted to use the compatible code, of JUnit 4 in the JUnit 5. So here we can include the dependency JUnit Platform Runner and JUnit Vintage Engine. So when you say JUnit Vintage Engine, it's basically JUnit 4. And when you say JUnit Jupyter Engine, it's basically JUnit 5. Okay. So this dependency we can also include if we need to support older JUnit 4 cases in our JUnit 5. Similarly, this is for Maven and for Gradle, what we have to do is we have to include in case of a Gradle is basically another build tool where you have to mention the repository that is Maven Central. It's like all public repos, public dependencies. So it is available on Maven Central that you can paste that dependency. And then we say Mockito core and other dependencies is going to core or something like that. They are all comes on the test implementation. Now the question is how we can create a mock, right? So let's see an example. So here we can see, right, we are creating mock in a particular test class, right? So there are two ways we can create mocks. As you know, this mock object is like a static object from ORJ Mockito, Mockito class. It has static object that is known as mock. When we mock, we pass the particular class name in a mock and it will return as a mock object that is the test dropper, right? So it's on the fly, it generates a definition of the particular class with the default behavior, right? So that means it just created a mock unless until we stub out 
the particular dependency is right. So they are basically not going to be used. So this is a mock, and all the methods are going to be returning default value. So see this, I have one class, the user service. User service has a three dependency. User repository, settings repository, and mail client. Okay. So each of the dependency, I can do the mock using mock static method. I can pass the respective class name and I create a mock object. And in that particular user service, I can, you know, pass the I can call the constructor. And in the constructor, I can pass all the key dependencies that are there. That is one way of creating mocks. Another or annotation based way of creating mock is basically when you're using the mock, you're going to be use extend annotation. That use you are using mockito extension class. And then run with is optional unless you using uh, JUnit code classes. Okay. So run with is not required. You can just put extend with and mock it to extension and then you can simply whatever you know objects or classes you want to mock you just prefix that with a mock annotation and your target object in which you wanted to inject this mock using the constructor you can simply call at the rate inject mock so this whole line of code is actually equivalent of all of this code so every mock is create a particular mock object and then your inject mock is basically it automatically creates a cons call a constructor passing all the mock object as an argument and that particular constructor is chosen and that particular object has been initialized okay any question how to create mock i think we are familiar with both of the approaches right yes sir okay. yes, sir now or we can define the mock beforehand in before each method okay so in the before each method we can also inject the mock in a method argument and then we can pass this okay so now this mock is become a stub when we actually calls the when and then return right now what you are doing is we are calling the settings repository get user minimum age okay then it's returning 10 right now we have mockito then there is a lenient re method is called then you have a when when you mention the particular method or the behavior of that particular mock you wanted to override so now this become a stub so we are stubbing or changing the behavior they're saying, okay, when you call this method, you're going to be returning 10. That is the fixed predefined response. Similarly, we can, you know, either static import this, then we have can call get username minimum length. We can return four. Or you can say username already exists if we are checking that. And there we are using any. What is any? Any is nothing but it's a matcher so mockito support different kind of matchers so can anyone tell me what are the argument matchers mockito provide and why we use matter for hello sir yeah what is the purpose of matchers and what different kind of matchers are there Sir, matches are basically for stubbing purposes. It's uh, basically for matching arguments. Yes. Right? So, for example, say I'm going to be passing in this method, say fixed uh, username. Right? So, what I can put, I can put the username, say, commit call at the rate learning mate dot. So then the matter is happening against the particular fixed value. If so, what happens is if that particular you know parameters or value goes into the particular method, then what happens is then the particular value is returned either true or false, right? So by default it is false. So 
if you wanted to change that, whether the user do it. So what is the scenario maybe? So when you get is doing a particular registration, right? So obviously you don't want the user to be, you know, be registered with the same username. So here we're going to call the repository or access the database where it's going to be fetching the result. Okay, the user has been called and that particular user by default is returning present in the DB or not. Okay, if it is present, we have the one bunch of code logic is going to be executed. We're not going to use that to move forward with the registration. If it is not present, then we let the user to move forward, right? So by default, if we uh, say we can either pass here a particular fixed username or we can do also is we can match with any value, right? So there is different kind of matches are there, any, any in string, etc. Also, we have like equal to, greater than, less than, those matters are also available. One rule we have to keep in mind when you are using matter is that you cannot mix matters and fixed values together. So if you say a particular parameter where you are passing the user name and you are passing the status, Right now, we say that your status is true and username is any string. You cannot do that. You have to use a particular fixed value or you have to use the key. Whenever you use matter, every parameter should be represented with a box to matter. So, when that particular condition is true, only then and only then your Return value will be returned. Okay. So, are we clear on the how we can, what is the rule related to the matcher? Sir, so can we like pass multiple arguments for this matcher? Yeah. When you're passing the multiple argument, say, for example, say there is like we are passing one is the username and we are checking with the status, which is seeing that whether there is a user which having like an active status do exist in our database or not. So passing two values, right? Now, in one case, I say that the username can be any, okay? And the status is active. Then that will not work. Any string or I can say any, then the class. Name. Then it will not work. So marketer said, okay, you have used one first argument, you have used the batter in string, and the second argument you're passing a default value, right? That is the active status, right? Instead of doing that, what you need to do is you need to send it to in a batcher format. So what you can do, you can put EQ, then the corresponding value that is EQ. Then your status. Then the both of them first is the init string, next one is the EQ, and that will actually going to be able to work. Otherwise, your test case is going to be fail. It's not going to run, it will be ignored. Because Mockito will complain that you have sent a mix of matters and a little value. Okay, so we know when, then, etc. Okay, sir, why uh, do you use a uh, lenient? Yeah, so lenient is basically we use when we say that there is not a hard rule, right, to failure of that particular behavior. So what happened is. Mockito may to an exception, okay? If that particular mock has been never called from any of the test cases, I have make it, I have mocked the particular stuff, right? But in all of the test cases, I have not actually, you know, write a flow to which the particular method or this mock behavior has been called. 
So in that case, mock if we use linear, then it will be ignored. And even if there is no interaction with that particular mock and the particular behavior of it, so our test case will go through. If I don't put linear, then it will fail that it will say, okay, you have mock, but you have never used. Okay. That explains what is the difference between lenient and without lenient when. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, how we, we can verify the mocks, right? Okay. So, uh, we have called the mock. And here the mock is also, we have another option is using answer. So let's see this example. This is the first part of the example. We have included a mock mail client and we have a given user that is there. Now when the user repository, I'm inserting a user class. That is I'm using any, so I'm using a parameter matcher. So for any user, what it's going to do, it's going to be instead of then return, right? Returning an object, it's going to be having answer. Right. Answer is you can think of your your own implementation. So previously, what you are doing, right? We are just returning the value, a predefined value, but we are not actually, you know, re-implementing the particular method. But here, when you use answer, we can totally re-implement that particular method and return that particular value or put addition logic if you want it. So when you say answer, right? Here we include, so it is like a, like a anonymous class altogether, right? And in this class, I'm maintaining a particular state int sequence is equal to one. That means every time this method is called, this answer will increment the sequence number and set a user ID, okay? And this answer class having going to take one object that is the answer and it will take one argument that is invocation on mock from the invocation we can access the argument whatever that is called from the method so zero position one position two position etc i can pass the argument for position number and i can get the particular object and what this is doing is basically incrementing the sequence number setting that using a setter id and then returning the same object Okay, so instead of then return, we are, you know, using an answer to just to increment the value, right? So it's maintaining a state. So that's another way we can define, implement or change the total behavior of the function as well, instead of just returning a value. Now, after this, we have, you know, passed this, we created the object when we pass this value. That's okay. Now, what are you going to do? We're going to call the user dot registration. So when the user dot registration, what happens is we're going to check whether the user do exist or not. If the user do exist, fine. We're going to say, okay, user do exist, not exist, then we're going to let him, you know, register himself. As he register himself, obviously the user repository is going to be saving the user detail there, right? Okay. And then we get a new user. When you get a new user, how are we going to verify? You can use the monkey to verify that whether this object, this method has been called. So just we put the object, then we put what is the you know variable that has been a method that has been used and what is the argument that has been basically passed. So here is the same user object has been passed. Then we're going to check, okay, user's gate ID is not null. And also we're going to check, okay, mail client. We have seen the user registration email with the inserted user object. Okay, that's why we can verify. And also I hope we know that verify can take another second argument apart from the object. It's the number of time it executes, right? So there you can put times one, at least one, never, those kind of things you can do. Okay. So Sir. that means 
the particular method has been called how many times by default the second argument is called patient it is always assumed that the particular method has been called only once with that particular argument so if we have like the method is to be called twice, then we have to say comma and then we can say times two times the method. I will expect the method to pop and we pass the value two. So we are expecting this method to be called twice with the set of arguments. And if we have a multiple different arguments, what we can do? We can always use uh, any kind of matches as per the argument. Yes, any question? Yes, sir. Sir, I have a question. Sir, like we are doing verify mock. So, what is the difference between like doing this one and stubbing? So, is yeah, this stub one... stubbing is when you are doing two way, you can do the stubbing. You are basically stubbing the argument and you are doing the verify. Okay. Yeah, that's the difference. Just like this, you can you know override the definition and you can put additional logic to when you call the particular method, what's going to happen, right? So you're overriding or changing the method behavior or you're returning a fixed value. Okay, that is stubbing. Now we have defined the stuff, defined the box. Okay, stubbing is about changing the behavior, right? Of so that is how the function will return the value or how the function will internally work. Now, what's the purpose of verify? The purpose of verify is that, okay, in my code flow, this function, this class is having this function to be called. Now, how many times they have been called? Either they have called or they have not called. So I'm expecting they have to be called with a certain values, whether those values have been used to call the function or not. Right here, we can see the example. Our user service has been called with the object user. So if the user is already doesn't exist in our data, which obviously the user repository will be called once, right? And with the particular argument user, that's we are actually verifying. We verify that user repository method insert is called with the argument user. And here the default number of all that particular mock stub method has been gone through is one by default it is one. similarly if the user has been inserted obviously we're going to be sending him a registration notification so when we send a registration notification what object we're going to be sending there obviously we get a new database object that is different, and that particular database object I'm expecting to be called in the mail client with this method. So that means this sec second verify is telling on the mail client, send user registration method has been called with inserted user only once. So only just mocking is not good enough. We also need to check whether, okay, I've been mocked. What is the interaction after execution of the program? or a particular scenario, I know this method will be called once, this method may be never be called, right? Then, how many times that particular method is been called and which argument? That we are verifying the, how the mock behavior has been used or interacted with, right? So here we are checking two things, whether the method has been called, how many times is called, and then whether the method has been called with the listed parameters or not. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So let's see an example, right? So let's create this example. So in this example, what we have, we have a simple registration method. And we have like an insert. We have on the user repository, we have a method which is basically between, 
that each username already exists. So let's write this a simple logic and then write the unit test case. So this is my user service and user service having all three other classes which are dependent on this, right? We are passing them using constructor. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be writing a public method which is going to take user, which is basically registered user method, right? It's going to take a user, user, okay? Fine. So what is basically we're going to check? So in the user registry, we're going to write two methods, right? One is uh, going to return Okay, so what I can say any match, right? Instead of doing filter, I can just say this any match. It's a Boolean spelling. This is one method. Use username and do exist, right? The second method is about returning a user object, right? Sir, I have a question. Good. Okay. Hmm. Sir, uh, before actually like verifying, we have to do stubbing, right? Or don't we have to do any stubbing? Means uh, I want to say like, is it mandatory to do stubbing before we actually verify the mocks? Is mandatory to do stubbing before we I verify the mocks. Yes, yes. If you don't do stubbing, what happens is they're going to be returning default value. So here it's going to be coming as null. Here it's going to coming always as false. Okay. 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 Now coming to this uh, registration object, right? So what the first thing we're going to check? We're going to check if User depository, right? Is username exist? User dot get username. Or else, I want to register that particular user, right?
this is like a use, inserted user okay. so if username do exist then we're going to be maybe you know throwing an exception doing something like that you can see Doing this exception if the user is there. I'm doing this and also I need to send the mail client, right? So the mail client, uh, it is, you know, at this method. Okay. There is some, you know, logic to sending the mail so i'm not putting that out right and maybe we can put so. so that's a very simple logic right Yes, okay. So how we can write the unit test case for this? So what I need to do is that I simply write unit test cases. So let's do that. Uh, let's just move them to the uh, local location. Let me create another package. So now I can put a new class, right? This is a service for test. So this is my test class. What I'm going to do is uh, here I'm going to be using Mokito. So Mokito extension class that I have to add. So I can use the mock framework. Right? So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to be using very simple inject mocks. I take user service is a service. Then I'm going to have the mocks, right? How many mocks I have? I have setting mocks, etc. Et I bet then I'll have a mock user repository. I will settings repository. Then I can say settings repository. So these are just mock. We have not you know done any kind of you know, scrubbing. Then I have like a mail client mock mail. Okay. So that's been done, right? So let us put a test. So 
test user we have the mocks and everything is done right now what we need to do is to you know forward this particular logic So we need to return this value as a false, so that means this portion get executed. This portion get this portion get executed. Okay. So what you need to what you need to do that? Okay. First of all, I need to mock out the user mock user repository, right? But before that, I need to create a user, right? Yes, so let me you know create a user. Here. So Okay. So let's create the user out here. So I put user over again. So that's my user is object state, right? So this object I'm going to be calling, but before calling this, what I need to do, I need to set up the mocks, right? So here are my user need to be successfully registered. What I need to do is we need to put when, okay? So then user, mock user repository, mock user repository, user email do exist. So what I can put, I can put either any string Then we can pause. So we import it this form. It will be coming as false. Next, what happened is fine. Then what is seen that uh, okay. then we have like a mock user repository. We have like an insert. You can pass the insert also. And then return. I can use the new answer. Okay. This is what is going to come. Now, what is saying that? Okay, so then return we don't need to put, we need to put only then. Now, here what you need to do out here is 
basically uh, but the same logic they are doing like instead of like depending on uid uh, what we first going to get we're going to get the user object right that you have seen invocation or get argument this is zero object right you got that then what you need to do is user dot set id we're going to be using a fixed value one two three four then here we are returning the user that is answer that you are sending implementation of that then we don't use a fixed value for it is our own logic okay now um so here these two methods are being mocked right this is the two you know method that will be called correct this method will be called and obviously if it's this part is comes then the insert method is called and this method is also called right here we have overwritten so this object has been written and that is we're going to verify that whatever the example we have seen right so now what you need to do after mocking i need to be calling the actual test class okay actual object so that means user service and I say register user, then whatever user object I have, that I return. And then I get a particular user, let's say new user, let's say that. Or we can name it like persisted user. Now, here we're going to do mocking. So, what mock I'm going to do? I can check, verify. What you're going to verify that whether uh, this method has been called once. Okay? But I can put this method has been called, and I can put times, and I can say one. It's not required to put that, but just to check uh, what username it has been called with. So it has been called with with the user one. Correct. So that's checking whether that particular method has been called or not, that I can check or I can go, I also cannot check. But anyhow, uh, let's say user is user one, that has been called. That one verification we have done. Now the second verification, what we can do is mock user repository. And then the times is not required, you can say insert. And that has been called with the user. And then the last verify that we are doing out here is that the mail client, mock mail client, it has been called with the method sent user with the email, it will be with the persisted user. Let's try to run it, and if it fails, we try to figure it out. What is the cause of it? Okay, what is failing? What is saying that? Okay, so if you wanted to use the lambda, you need to uh, enable lambda expression. Uh, user repos actually okay. So currently, it's saying the source value. So if there is a source value is still there. Okay, so can you change here the source module the project okay so still it's having somewhere the source value has seven let's see in the problem again no so it's obsolete you can check Margin it is 17. Right? The source over it. So, yeah, it is 17. Okay, and I can build it. No, it's not getting built. Okay, so what I can do, I can you know replace this with simple for loop. Uh, that I can do. 
So it's, it's not the code related, it's basically ID related. So let's just do that. Okay. Let's do it. This Okay, wherever you have the local date time, so it's for now. Any other places? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 The bill is successful, but this is just run the run the bill. Okay, so this is okay. So my uh, execution is correct. So it's all passed out, right? And now if I going to go in and also check the coverage, right? You see the coverage. Okay. So now here, if I come here. Here I can see right this exception has not been handled right. So we are going in this particular route. We are coming into this thing as bank, but this exception is not there right. So how can we handle the exception right? So we can track uh, to our for this right. Have probably my user extreme extra quantity system. So here, what need to be doing? I'm just having the same user object. So what I can also do, I can you know send this user object in initialize in a before each method. So here what I can do instead of you know returning false, I can you know return true. If I'm going to be returning true, right? Then what happened is that when I'm going to be making this call. The user exist exception. Again, I cannot use lambda. 
it is showing seven. That way I can, you know, check whether this exception. Uh, so based on this, now what happened? This being, you know, executed and then your assertions will happen and this particular path will be get executed, right? And you get like a hundred percent coverage. Okay. So we have seen that uh, how we can, you know, write the unit test cases, how we can, you know, add the dependencies, right? Using mock it all, extend with mock. And then how we can, you know, use either answers or then return and then all this and then do the verification. Apart from that, there is like another concept known as an argument capture, right? So if say certain method are there that is internal to that particular function has been called, if you want to change, change what is the exact argument this method has been called with, that you can also check. That is another feature that is available. So any questions so far? Yes, sir. Hmm. sir uh, like uh, without using that verify, can we use the asset that again, like asset that is not null? We can use, right? Yeah, you can use, but you are only verifying this one. You are not verifying whether the mocks you have done, right? Those mocks has been called or not with the specific argument or not. Correct? So I did not get you, sir. Can you? Yeah. So in this our service method, right? Yeah. If I say I'm going to only verify this, this is true or false, right? So whatever mocks you have done for this method and for this method, right? You are not verifying that, correct? You are not verifying whether this method has been called or not whether the mock has been the, have any kind of interaction. So when you say verify this, you are actually checking whether this particular mock objects, methods are having any interaction. If they have any interaction, how many times they have interacted with and what is the argument they have been called with. Okay. 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 So that is also important. Because otherwise you are missing that you are only checking the input and output. They're not checking what is that exact you know path in which the program is executed, whether that in that particular path you have a certain method has been called up. Any other questions we have? Uh, no, sir. Pardon. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. If we don't have any other question, we can end the session for the day. Or should I stop the recording? Yes, please. And um...